All right, let's do a little optimization problem here. So we've got a cylinder and we need to know what is the what are the minimum dimensions that will hold 30 cubic centimeters. All right, so let's dive into it. Look, your very first step, right? Your very first step is is you want to draw a picture. You want to make sure you visualize this, get it solid in your head, right? Maybe if you've done it a thousand times, you don't need to do that, but yeah, absolutely draw it out for first. So this is a, a sketch of a cylinder, but we're looking for the dimensions, which will be like what you would actually make this from. And so we're going to have one base, right? It's a cup, so the top is open, but we're going to have one base, which would be the a circle in the bottom, right? The same radius. And then the outside, and the outside is actually a rectangle. And the thing with the rectangle is that this length right here is the circumference of the cylinder. So this is 2 pi r, right? That's the circumference, and of course this is r. So anyway, start off with that, right? And then the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to write your formulas, right? So step two, you write your formulas, right? We're going to have two formulas. We want to minimize this. So we're going to write this formula and this formula. Then we're going to adjust this one. We're going to substitute. And uh, since we're looking for the dimensions of the cylinder, um, I guess it could go either way, but we're going to we're going to substitute into this one right here. All right. So anyway, let's do this right here. Um, the volume, which I know is 30. The volume of a cylinder is pi r cubed h. Ah, pi r squared. Sorry about that. Pi r squared h, right? So pi r squared h, so it's the area of the base times the height, that's the volume, right? And so then the surface area, the surface area is um, the height, which is right here, right? It's the height times the uh, circumference, pi r squared, or 2 pi r h plus pi r squared, the area of the circle. So this is the area of the rectangle. And this is the area of the circle, right? So there we go. We got our two things right there. So what we're going to want to do now is we want to make sure we go ahead and um, we have we want to reduce one of these two things down here into uh, a one variable. So we're going to solve for one variable and we're going to substitute. So I'm going to take this one. And I'm going to solve this for h right here. I'm going to solve this one for h. So if that's step three, right? So step three is you want to solve something. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to divide both sides, so I'm going to get h equals, right? I'm going to divide 30 by pi r squared. So I know that's what h equals. h equals 30 divided by pi r squared. So now, after you get done with that, step four is you want to go ahead and you want to substitute. Step four, we're going to take this value, and we're going to substitute that in right there, okay? So we got the surface area. The surface area is 2 pi r and then 30 divided by pi r squared plus pi r squared All right so we got that so we substitute that in we want to simplify this we want to clean it up because we're going to take the derivative but we want to make sure it's nice and pretty first so um, when I'm looking at this right here let's see the those pies those reduce and make one right so I've got 60 over r Right, 60 over r um, plus pi r squared. And that's my surface area. Okay, so now I, I've i got my nice little formula right here. So we're gonna take the derivative of this right here, right? Because we're gonna take the derivative, we're gonna set it uh, equal to zero. We're gonna see if we can figure out uh, exactly what the minimum value is gonna be for the radius. So um, when I take the derivative of this, if you remember, you might want to do it like that, right? Um, I'm not really sure, the, the area maybe, all right? Uh, so anyway, um, that's a negative one. So I've got negative 60 r to the negative 2 plus 2 pi r. So that that's my derivative right there. Now after you get your derivative, what you're going to want to do, well, I guess the derivative was step five. Um, step six, we want to take that derivative. We want to set it equal to zero. 
and we want to solve it, right? So, um, well, what's the best way to go about this? Probably to get rid of this thing right here. So I'm going to multiply both sides. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this up here. I'm going to run out of room. All right. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to rewrite it over here. So I've got zero equals negative sixty r to the negative two plus two pi r. So that negative sixty right there. That that sorry that that. Uh, that right here, this thing's a bit of a problem. So I want to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation all the way around by r squared. That, that, and that. So remember, what you do to one side, if you do the same thing to the other, perfectly valid. So r squared times 0, well, that's still 0. r squared times negative r squared, right? Remember, if the bases are the same, you're adding them, negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0 and anything to the power of 0 is 1 so what I'm left with is negative 60 and then over here plus 2 pi r cubed alright so now this is a little bit cleaner so now we're just going to use uh, some basic inverse operations to go ahead and get this r value by itself so we're going to add 60 to both sides right 2 pi r cubed then we're going to divide both sides by 2 pi equals r cubed. Next step to get rid of the cube, we're going to take the cube root. We're going to go ahead and reduce this a little bit. So we got 30 over pi, right? And we've got the cube root of that equals r. Because remember, what you're going to be doing here is going to be taking the cube root, All right? Cube root cancels with the cube. So uh, whatever that number turns out to be, if you were to plug that into a calculator, you get 2.12. Uh, one six that's approximately the radius right so there's the radius we're almost done our objective is to find the dimensions the dimensions would be the radius and the height right the radius and the height so we got the radius so now let's figure out the height so we're going to take that we're going to plug it in to our our uh, into our formula for volume so we had 30 centimeters cubed right uh, is equal to pi and then I've got this thing right here, right? So I've got, I've got, I don't know, I could do either number. I'm going to go ahead and do this one right here. Let's see, 2.1216 squared h. So I'm taking this, right? I'm plugging in my r value. I'm going to solve this for h. So I have got 30 divided by 2.1216 squared pi is equal to h plug that into your calculator turns out almost exactly the same thing it rounds to the same exact thing and there's your height and there's your radius so what we found out is that 2.1216 was our height and our radius same exact thing 2.1216 so there you go so just a quick recap right to do the optimization draw a picture you don't absolutely have to do that, but it really helps keep things solid. Draw a picture, make a formula for the two parts, right? And then you're going to have to combine those two formulas. So you need to solve one of the formulas for a variable, so you end up with one variable, and you're going to substitute that in. That's what we did here. We solved for one variable, then we substituted it in, simplified it, took the derivative, set the derivative equal to zero, and solved, right? We solved all over here, and then once we had that solved, we, re we substitute that back into one of the original equations to figure out the other variable. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful.